Hello, and welcome to this Shoreland Zoning Update. My name is Lynn Markham, and I am the Shoreland Specialist with the University of Wisconsin Extension Center for Land Use Education, located at UW-Stevens Point. The Wisconsin Legislature has made many changes to Shoreland Zoning in the past year, and this three-part video summarizes the changes. This video includes three parts. The first part is an introduction to shoreland zoning and the recent changes to required shoreland lot sizes. The second part is changes to shoreland setbacks, vegetation protection, and impervious surfaces. And the third part is changes to standards for buildings that are located close to the shoreline. The purposes of shoreland zoning include to prevent and control water pollution, to protect spawning grounds, fish, and aquatic life, and to keep the trees, shrubs, and other plants along the shoreline that protect our lakes and streams. We've also learned that shoreland zoning standards protect property values. In lakes with less clear water, waterfront property values are lower. This comes in part from a study of over 1,200 waterfront properties in Minnesota that found when the water was less clear by three feet, waterfront property values around these lakes went down by tens of thousands to millions of dollars. What shoreland practices make water less clear? Rooftops on buildings and pavement close to the water cause increased runoff that carries pollutants to the lake or stream. We also see increased soil pollution and there's no shoreline buffer in place to filter the runoff before it enters the lake. We have shoreland zoning in Wisconsin to protect our lakes and rivers, which in turn protects our waterfront property values. Healthy shorelands with a lush mixture of native grasses, flowers, shrubs, and trees hold the soil in place, filter polluted runoff, and provide critical habitat for eagles, songbirds, loons, and more. The Wisconsin Constitution, created in 1848, says navigable waters are common highways and forever free. This led to our understanding that the waters of Wisconsin belong to all of the people of Wisconsin, which is the basis of the public trust doctrine. The state of Wisconsin has the obligation to protect the public's rights to make sure that our lakes and rivers are boatable, fishable, swimmable, and can be hunted on. When shoreland zoning was adopted in 1966 by the Wisconsin Legislature, it set minimum standards, and counties could adopt higher standards as they decided what was best for the lakes and rivers in their counties. Counties continued to make these decisions for over 35 years until 2015. We have seen many changes to shorelines since shoreland zoning was adopted in 1966. As shown on this graph, the number of homes along shorelines in northern Wisconsin has increased 216% since 1965. In addition to the increase in the number of homes, the size of homes and cottages has increased significantly, from modest cottages to larger homes that typically have a bigger impact on the lake. As a result of more homes and larger homes causing increased impacts to lakes, as well as new scientific research looking at how waterfront development affects lakes and fish, many counties adopted higher shoreland standards than the state minimums. Key components of shoreland zoning that protect lakes and rivers are minimum lot sizes, setbacks from the water, and shoreland buffers. As you see on this slide, larger lot sizes were adopted by 43 counties, larger shoreland setbacks by 25 counties, larger shoreland buffers by 13 counties, and impervious surface standards by 17 counties. As a result of more homes and larger homes causing increased impacts to lakes, as well as new scientific research looking at how waterfront development affects lakes and fish, many counties adopted higher shoreland standards than the state minimums. Key components of shoreland zoning that protect lakes and rivers are minimum lot sizes, setbacks from the water, and shoreland buffers. As you see on this slide, larger lot sizes were adopted by 43 counties, larger shoreland setbacks by 25 counties, larger shoreland buffers by 13 counties, and impervious surface standards by 17 counties. In 2015, shoreland zoning in Wisconsin changed. 
The Wisconsin Legislature passed Act 55, the State Budget Bill, which stated counties can no longer have shoreland zoning standards that are more restrictive or higher than state standards for any of their lakes and streams. This means that the state minimum standards also became the state maximum standards. Act 55 also included other shoreland zoning changes and became effective July 14, 2015. Minimum lot sizes are part of shoreland zoning because they determine the number of homes, driveways, garages, and piers that will affect a lake or stream. Minimum lot sizes also allow adequate space on a lot to ensure that septic systems are not too close to drinking water wells or the lake. This photo shows 75 foot wide lots, slightly wider than the 65 foot lots currently required on sewered lakes. You see that when homes are placed on lots of this size, there isn't a lot of space between homes and the shoreline often becomes quite urbanized with few trees remaining to hold soil in place and provide wildlife habitat. In comparison, on larger lots where homes are spaced farther apart, the result is often a more natural, healthy shoreline. As an example of the effect of different minimum lot sizes, Round Lake is a small 80-acre lake. If homes are built on 300-foot wide lots around its entire shoreline, it will have 22 homes around it when it is completely developed. With current statewide shoreland standards, counties may not require lot sizes to be more than 100 feet wide on unsewered lots, which would allow 66 homes around the same lake as shown on this slide. On sewered lots, counties may not require lots to be more than 65 feet wide. 65 foot lots would result in 105 homes around the lake. Smaller lots and more homes on a lake results in more phosphorus running off into the lake. This is because many soils in Wisconsin have high levels of phosphorus even without any added fertilizer. You can see that the amount of phosphorus delivered to Round Lake increases from 4 pounds on an undeveloped lake to 18 pounds with homes on 300 foot lots to 27 pounds with homes built on 100 foot lots. What effect does phosphorus have when it is delivered to lakes? In 80% of Wisconsin lakes, adding phosphorus increases the amount of algae and aquatic plants that grow in the lake. Adding one pound of, one pound of phosphorus can result in up to 500 pounds of algae growth. So building homes on 100-foot lots compared to 300-foot lots adds an additional 9 pounds of phosphorus each year, which can cause up to 4,500 pounds of additional algae. Phosphorus can also be recycled in a lake, so that one year's algae growth decomposes in the lake and feeds algae again the next year. As shown on this aerial photo where phosphorus was added to the part of the lake on the lower right, phosphorus results in more algae and vegetation growth, which can make it unpleasant for swimming. As this algae dies and decomposes, it can also lead to unpleasant odors and lower oxygen levels in the water. Some fish can't tolerate lower oxygen levels, so the result is more rough fish and fewer game fish. To wrap up this section about minimum lot sizes, let's consider the following points. 43 counties adopted larger shoreland minimum lot sizes prior to 2015 for some or all of their lakes and streams. Since the Wisconsin Legislature changed state law in July of 2015, Shoreland lot size standards are one size fits all statewide. The requirements are 20,000 square foot lots 100 feet wide on unsewered lakes and 10,000 square foot lots 65 feet wide on sewered lakes. Counties may no longer require larger lot sizes through shoreland zoning. Counties may require larger lots under general zoning or subdivision ordinances, but no longer under shoreland zoning. Thank you for joining me for this Shoreland Zoning Update. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, Lynn Markham, at the email shown below.